Three years ago, after an investigation by this programme, all political parties promised to do more to wipe out sexual harassment in Westminster. Today, fresh allegations reveal just how little appears to have changed. As the Prime Minister outlined in her letter yesterday, there can be no place for harassment, abuse or misconduct in politics. No one should have to work in the toxic atmosphere of sleazy, sexist or homophobic banter. No MP, let alone a minister, should think it's something to make jokes about. This is not hysteria. This is something which is long overdue for all the parties in this House to deal with. In a statement today, the Commons leader vowed to take action within days to set up a complaints procedure for MP staff after allegations about serving ministers and opposition politicians. Flanked by Theresa May, she suggested some ministers might be sacked. And this is what's really set the cat among the pigeons. A list drawn up by Conservative researchers naming MPs accused of harassing staff and colleagues. I've got a copy of the unredacted list. Exactly half of those on it are serving ministers, some of them in the cabinet. Others are former members of the government. And the alleged misdemeanours range from simple tittle-tattle about extramarital affairs to serious allegations of harassment and abuse of power. The vast majority of MPs named are men. One former minister on the list told us... Outrageous. It's not a serious list, that's for sure. It's absolutely outrageous, completely untrue. If these allegations are made public, it's a very serious matter. Another said... As far as I know, it's all I am completely mystified. One serving minister said... I'm not a sex pest, I'm a feminist. The list has been drawn up over a period of years by a handful of Conservative researchers. I spoke anonymously to one of those behind it. He questioned how much would really change when so many ministers are accused of inappropriate behaviour themselves. What motivation would the Whip's office have to get to the bottom of this? Theresa May has released a statement saying she wants to work with the Speaker on this. How genuine is that? She'd like to get all this to go away, but the Whip's won't really help her with that. One of the people on this list has been inappropriate with me. I don't want the government to fall, but it's not right that members of Parliament feel as if they can engage in this sort of inappropriate behaviour because it wouldn't be accepted in other professions. Yet it's been accepted in Westminster for decades. Our investigation three years ago made plain the scale of the problem. A third of men and women we surveyed who worked in Parliament had experienced sexual harassment involving abuse of power. I saw an MP who said, sorry, I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. He just touched my bum and put his fingers at the top of my pants. I didn't report it, as a lot of people were there to witness it. I just put it down to the Westminster bubble. Afterwards, both the Conservatives and Labour announced new procedures and the Commons set up a helpline for MPs' staff. Yet today it's reported that senior Conservatives stopped the former Prime Minister giving staff a right to seek arbitration something Theresa May is now championing. What we're talking about here is a relationship between a member of parliament and his or her parliamentary staff who may not be members of the same political party, they may not uh, even vote for the same political party, and it would be entirely improper, in my view, to force a member of staff uh, to go to a party political process uh, when they are employed on an entirely non-political basis as parliamentary staff. And although the new Liberal Democrat leader, Vince Cable, said he backed Mrs May, this is the very same man campaigning for his seat this year with Lord Renard. The Lord Renard accused of abusing his power as a senior Lib Dem by behaving inappropriately towards women. Lord Renard denied those allegations first aired on this programme. Today, one MP after another stood up to denounce the culture of harassment in Westminster, some listing specific allegations against unnamed colleagues. But after all the fine words, Will action really now follow? Well, with me now is Harriet Harman and the Conservative MP Anna Soubry. Anna Soubry, first, you heard there how action was promised across the spectrum 2014. Now it's promised again. Why has it taken so long? Oh, you'd have to ask others why it's taken so long. It's because these things are not taken seriously. There is another reason, I think, that's behind this, and there's always this fear 
that you don't want to rock the boat. You know, don't don't make too much of a fuss of it, especially at the moment because we have a you know we don't have a majority, and mm. so we don't want to make a fuss about things because you know the Labour Party is chomping at the bit here. They're going to take over and everything else. So keep it all down. It's it's totally, utterly, and completely unacceptable. So and do you think anything's going to change are again? Fed up to the back teeth, mm. and it's got to change. But will um, it? I think after what Andrea Leadsom said and the fact that I think the PM genuinely takes this very seriously, though they've now said that they want the independent, independent body that I certainly have asked for, um, that is going to be make... We need to stand a system. up for staff. No, but we need a system just like anywhere else in any other organisation. Nothing special because it's Parliament, but if you have a pass or you have uh, an email account through the parliamentary process, you should, as part of getting that pass, getting that account, sign up to the fact that you can make a grievance and be the subject of a grievance. We've got okay. to strip out party yeah. politics and strip out the whips right. office. Well, well, let's strip out party politics now. Harriet Harman, do you back the system that Anna Subri has described? I absolutely do, and I recognise what she's saying. She's saying that on her side, in the Tory side, it's like, don't rock the boat, don't you realise we've hardly got a majority and you could bring the government down? And on our side, it's like, well, we all want to stick together because we want to get rid of the Tories and get into government, don't rock the boat. And this has been beset by two things. Firstly, that tribal politics, which encourages people to cover up for misdemeanours on their own side well, do you... when we should be setting a higher standard. And but, do you accept also... that Labour's problem with sexism is as entrenched as the Tories' problem with sexism? I mean, for example, Jared O'Mara accused of saying horrible things about women and also some pretty homophobic things. He was allowed through to be elected as an MP. But you see, I don't think it's Labour's problem with sexism or the Tories' problems with sexism. I think there's an institutional culture of impunity, and that's for two reasons. Firstly, because the tribalism, which allows people to protect their own when they should be exposing them, but also it's about the difficulty of a junior person complaining about somebody who is powerful. And that's why it's really important, in addition to what Anna said, that there is anonymity for the complainer. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. if you're Just a like junior it. researcher, you think if you complain about an MP, you'll never work again. No, and I, if you're a young journalist... Let me, let me bring in Anna here. Okay. I think you're... No, I absolutely agree. I just have to say, I mean, I've never experienced sexism in my own party. And, I mean, I was actually a member back a, as a student. I've never experienced it. That doesn't mean to say by any means it doesn't exist. But, I mean, and I don't want this to turn into a debate about momentum and the real problems which I think have, we've seen in the attacks. <laughs> no one mentioned misogyny. momentum apart from you. No, exactly, yeah. but I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I, 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 I really yeah. don't want to mention the man that Anna, you mentioned you and everything it, else. But you've just done <laughs> it. No, no, you but mentioned his name. Is... I'm, and I'm not going to do no, that. But the... What I'm going to say is we agree. This is the most important thing. This has got to transcend the normal tribal differences. We've got to have a proper system But like do any the senior blokes in your party agree? The 1922 Committee of Senior MPs blocked David Cameron's attempts to go further. That must dismay you, mustn't oh, it? Oh, it's appalling. But the point is whether or not anybody who you. opposes it is going to be able to continue to oppose it. And the trouble is that what happens is that the House of Commons sometimes has to be dragged kicking and screaming to They've reality. To. And I, I sense, I mean, call me over-optimistic, but I sense that on both sides of the House now there is a real sense that we can actually do something about this. But and it's we... long overdue, because it's been the soundtrack for my political life exactly. in Parliament. But let's Parliament. look at this list we've People been reporting. People complaining but not feeling they yeah. can do anything and about this it. This list we've been reporting on, half of the names on the list are, are ministers. Now, should ministers accused of harassing and found that they have harassed, should they immediately be sacked? I, I, look, I think the first thing to say is apparently some of the people on this list have, are guilty of being unfaithful to mm. their partners. Yeah, there's an and array of allegations. And, and that is, if, if, if I may say, that is a different, that is just morally indefensible. That's but some different. of the allegations are much more serious of harassment and abuse of power. And, it's, it, to me, it's end of story. So it's what, sorry? Yeah, it's just. Uh, that's that is just a totally unacceptable. I mean, really, immediate well, people, so no, no, Mark, people, can't you? Uh, uh, everybody is entitled to a fair hearing, and, and what we do not want is trial by media. No disrespect, we do not want that. We want these things to be done properly. But, we've but got these to have... are serious allegations. They must be dealt with seriously. And if people have been found to have done things that are wrong, just like even if any that other workplace, out. Even but if there's see, a very senior have... minister. But we've got to have it on both Doesn't sides. Matter. That's the point. Doesn't there's got matter. to be a clean break whereby. If it happens with Labour, it's the same thing, that basically the standards have got to start from somewhere. I know it's And you feel there are senior said, shadow uh, ministers on your side who have done some pretty I despicable think that we, things when we have anonymity for complainants and people feel there's an independent uh, adjudication, 
there will be complaints coming forward. And at that point, we really have to be saying, this is where we start afresh. And if heads roll on either side, then that is a price worth paying for actually a decent system. Harriet Harman, Anna Subri, thank you very much for joining me.